A huge Warhammer 40k diorama has been sent to me from the opposite side of the globe. So today, today we're going to add to it. So let's go. So this right here is the first couple of stages of a really cool idea. Different content creators coming together and one by one they add a piece and then pass it on to the next person. It's a way for us to network, which is really corporate and dorky, but more importantly, it's a way for you guys as the viewers to be able to discover a new content creator that you may otherwise have not heard of. So how did we get here? Well, Rig Miniatures kicked everything off when he painted up three different Warhammer 40K minis and sent them over to Wolvencraft in Scotland. Wolvencraft is known for his design pieces and he hasn't let us down. We have a diorama setting of a downed Imperial spaceship. The floors are coming apart. There's some sort of Promethium chemical that's spilling out through the pipes. Now it's ready for us to add our bit. I'm excited to get creative with this project and nothing helps creativity quite like sugar. These snacks have been sent to me by Epic Art 40K all the way from Scotland, which is why I saved them for this build to fuel my creativity. Now I won't lie to you, on this channel I have some personal milestones hidden away in the background and I like to tick them off. Having snacks sent to me from the other side of the world was one of those. We've made it. I'm almost ready to start the project, but I want to brainstorm some ideas with you first. I want to be able to add to the story of what's going on, but not completely tell the story. I think that it'll need some wiggle room for the next hobbyist to be able to add their own creativity to it as well. I think I'll pick one section of the board, create a room, and then tell my story inside of that room. One of the minis that Rick painted is this guy, and he looks like he is having a horrible day. He's down on his knees, he's got an eye patch, he looks absolutely exhausted. I'll come back to him a bit later, but I want to use him. I'm thinking more so now about why did the ship crash? Now I could have the ship as midway through a boarding action with an enemy force, a fiery two-way range of just combat galore happening, but I think that I want something a little darker and more ominous. The warp in Warhammer 40,000 is this terrifying entity and just a perpetual risk to the Imperium of Man. First up, a big thank you to Niels on Fiverr for printing me up this device that will be perfect as an addition to my Imperial spaceship. His details are in the video description if you are after a high quality 3D printing service. I'm making a base using Plasticard and then gluing my pieces down with super glue. Oh my! Is it snack time? It's snack time. Let's do it. Cheers. Oh, yum. When I think of the warp, I automatically think about standard warp travel and ships passing through. But the warp isn't limited to this. My understanding of the law, and to hopefully accurately bring you up to speed, is that we exist in the Materium in real space. The warp is the Immaterium. We could cross over into the warp in order to travel obscene distances without time passing as regular. We want to get from one side of the galaxy to the other. Well, we could spend an eternity chugging along in real space, or we could perform a jump at faster than light travel enter the warp, and using psychic navigators and the light of the Emperor, we accurately exit the warp at the right moment and location to be where we want and when we want in real space. There has to be a downside, right? Right. The forces of chaos, the demons, they exist in the warp. That's bad. So that's a look at the warp and one form of warp travel, which is fast speed, jump, boom, you're gone. Warp gates, they're a bit different. That's a tunnel operating through real space that'll take you from A to B. But warp portals are different. They come in all different ranges and sizes and they operate as an entrance and an exit point to the warp. So this portal can be a static piece of equipment and the smaller they are, the rarer they are. But interestingly, our Imperial ship here had been tasked with transporting one. Is this beginning to feel like Event Horizon? Good because that movie has given me some ideas for this diorama and Warhammer also inspired that movie. So I'm bringing it back full circle. 
Big Imperial ships like this are protected when they pass through the warp by a shield known as a Gala Field. Our Gala Field has been damaged or destroyed during this incident and the moment it happened, a mechanical whirring sound started slowly and softly from within this room and has been growing louder with each passing minute. Power is cut in many areas of our ship and what remains is being depleted. The backup support system has kicked into drive and fuel life to the critical systems. Staff are reallocated to essential roles and the hallways throughout the craft are a stampede of footsteps and vox casts. Now I'm airbrushing on a layer of SoTech green. Oh, well hello there. Is it snack time again? It's snack time again. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> the Imperial Navy is enormous. Countless ships make up the multiple battle fleets and I haven't selected which class of vessel this is. It could be a small craft with the sole purpose of acting as a discrete transport or perhaps it's a huge cruiser, multiple kilometers in length that is relying on might as the deterrent to any would-be adversaries. An ever-present alarm tone has been sounding since the moments following the first felt impact. Almost the entire lighting system is down, with only dim illuminators and access panels affording visibility. Some operate overhead and others act as floor runners to guide a path to the ship's critical infrastructure. If you were interested in painting up large batches of these walls for skirmish games like Warhammer Kill Team, you could batch paint them quickly using the steps I've shown you here. The airbrushing steps could be substituted for dry brushing and likewise with the basic lighting effects I created. Replace that with a dry brush of bright white and then introduce fluorescent paints over the top. AK Interactive have some great ones that I've been using recently. <laughs> Command on the bridge of the ship have been attempting to contact the crew assigned to this sector and specifically to this room. The transmissions returned via the Vox were partially scrambled with interference but voices could be heard cutting in and out. Some voices sounded panicked, others sounded eerily calm. A small contingent of Space Marines were tasked with overseeing the safe travel of this relic and are aboard the vessel. Amidst the confusion and fear spreading through the craft, the Astartes move with purpose towards this location. We know that there's already a Death Watch Marine involved, so the Marine that I introduced can have his purpose left hanging. A question of whether he was already aboard the craft when it left port, or if he's just arriving. A Space Marine's ability to remain composed during such moments is what separates them into being the Emperor's finest soldiers. They are not immune to corruption and the powers of chaos within the warp though, and as they individually make their way closer and closer to this portal, they can feel a tugging from within them, like a silent whisper in the back of their helm that no one else can hear. The voice beckons the ship's crew closer. It's promising them something, but what? I make mistakes in every video, that's a given. But one thing that I have done on purpose that's a bit weird is I've removed the shoulder pauldrons of this marine. While I was building his pose, the animation and feel that I was looking to get from it was to have him appear more vulnerable and either offering support or reaching out for assistance. Once I placed the shoulder pauldrons on him though, it covered up a lot of that emotion and animation and you couldn't really see what he was doing. So that's why. Don't get me wrong, there'll be more mistakes to come, I'm sure. You know what isn't a mistake though? That's right, our channel Patreon. Fun fact, we recently hit 50 videos on the channel, so I'd like to say a massive thank you to those that are contributing financially to it. These people right here have been donating $1 a month, what a deal, to come be a part of it, and also to be a part of our Discord community, where there's a whole bunch of banter and encouragement with painting. So to each of you, thank you so much. And to the rest of you, only one dollar a month. Step closer to the portal. Closer. Closer. I'll put a link below in the video description and probably even in the pinned comment on directing you on how you can find our Patreon and also how you can come be a member of our Discord community and hang out with the rest of us. A dark coloured resin can act as a foreboding portal on either side of the inner ring. 
I test a few different colours and I end up settling with a mix of black and a metallic red. But you could easily go with a shiny black as well, like we see in the Astarte short film. But I thought having some red mixed in would give it a living evil impression. Our friend here finds himself on the precipice of two states. Half within the immaterium of the warp and half in the real space of our ship. The benefit of this being a static diorama and not an animation is that I can leave this question balancing for now. Is he being drawn into the warp through this portal? Or is he from another place and time trying to get out or trying to lure us in? I'm playing around a little with wanting some ripples and bumps to promote a moving fluid feel. There are a host of different products you could use and I've gone with Vallejo water texture. All that is needed now is to add the pieces in place to this section of the board. Riggs painted mini of this Imperial soldier kneeling is perfect for my little scene. He's conscious, but confused. He finds himself compelled to present before the portal, lowering his rifle, but why? Draw your conclusions on what you believe is occurring aboard this vessel and leave them in the comments below because guaranteed I read each of them. But for now, let's check out the progress of our Warhammer War Perfected diorama. Now the most important part of the video where I explain what happens next. I'm going to do my best to prepare this bad boy for postage across to the other side of the globe, but preferably using airmail and not via the wall. And where it's being sent, I'm going to introduce you in a second. But first, if you've enjoyed the video, I would love for you to click that like button below because that's a way of telling YouTube that they should recommend this video to other people in our hobby and community. Make sure you check out Rig Miniatures and Wolvencraft on YouTube and tell them that the Badger sent you. But now, let's meet our next content creator who's going to continue the story and add to the diorama. Now strap yourselves in because we have managed to land ourselves a pretty big deal. <laughs> So you're telling me that this thing that has come all the way from Scotland to Australia, I've now got to pack and send all the way back to Wales, which is right near Scotland. This is madness. I can't work in these conditions. Oh my God, no. Did I glue this piece of wall upside down? No. Why am I so dumb? Oh, I can't be that stupid. That is so dumb. Ah, oh, maybe, maybe they can be floor lights. Yeah, foolproof. Or better yet, maybe it's the warp. Definitely warp trickery. Oh my God. Uh, Max is gonna give me so much. <laughs> 